I'd like to welcome to the stage and introduce our next speakers uh, from uh, Data Art. Um, Kirill uh, Timofev and Dennis uh, uh, Baranov. Kirill and Dennis are both thought leaders and principal consultants at Data Art. They're both experts in innovation and new technologies and solution providers in the sectors. Uh, today, uh, they will be presenting on the topic of blockchain winter, the story behind the hype. So let's get a, a big round of applause for uh, Kirill and Dennis. Hello everyone, thank you for coming. Second day, it's usually not so easy to do. And yeah, we're here to talk a little bit about blockchain. And you definitely have a thousand of people around you who talked about blockchain. We try to make it a little bit more practical. We try to talk about our stories, stories of our clients, partners, and provide to you some understanding what's on the scene right now. Because last couple of years, since change. Before we go deeply into the presentation, we probably have a quick introduction of us. Yeah, so I'm Dennis. I've worked for blockchain last four and a half years. And I actually participate more than 20 different projects in blockchain, started from proof of concept and end up with some real production cases which are already up and running in the industry. And also I have here colleague Kirill. Uh, hi everyone, it is great to be here. Uh, I'll keep it short. I'm Kirill. I'm principal software architect, work with blockchain, also known as distributed leisure technologies for the like, last five years. And we are going to share our heartfelt experience, what it is. Okay, and let's start a little bit. Yeah, so most of you probably heard about right now it started to be a crypto winter. Yeah, so thanks God, uh, season of the Words of trance also end up right now. But crypto winter, it's why we name it in the industry because Bitcoin not at $10,000 anymore. And it's probably not so easy to get fundraising. Actually, people do not talk about blockchain so much. It's not really true, yeah, because we have to divide crypto and distributed ledger technology. And if you talked about crypto, yeah, I agree, it's Bitcoins or other currencies. It's not so easy to do ICOs, but it's a good thing, actually. Because right now, more industry think about how to use blockchain. And not just how to use it in POC, but in production cases. And if you go to the real numbers about how big investment from the different companies into the blockchain, you could see it's not decrease, it's actually increase in years. And another big thing, it's, you could see from that graph, it's actually about uh, size of the deal increase as well, yeah, so, and again, it's connected because of most of the bigger players in all industries started from finance and end up with other industries like a travel, healthcare, or retail, actually, try to do something with blockchain on real project, yeah, again, it's all started from PRCs, of course, yeah, but some of insurance clients or some of the insurance partners will introduce a couple of the platform in the next year or so. Also, you could see from the news that bigger players start to use it in real cases for supply chain management or for manufacture or for other stuff. And that's actually, again, as any technology, and blockchain is just a technology, it's not a silver bullet, will change industry completely. It has different stages then it started. It was the same with machine learning. It was the same with internet, actually. Yeah? So all started from the hype. Everyone want to use technology just because. And you had many, many stories about that. My favorite and company just add blockchain into the name, blah, 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 blockchain. And actually, the evaluation just doubled during the night, yeah? because everyone thinks they start doing something. Yeah, but it's just name. And it's some stories which also behind the hype. And after that, it's usually started with POC or proof of concept. And it's okay if you try and it's not working for you. You should not again try to push technology everywhere. You should find the right business problem. And I will give you some example there. We think blockchain could help you before go to the technology. And right now, we, it's really exciting stage. Again, it's more and more production cases. Yeah, so the real project which give some value to the business 
started to appear of the scene. And somewhere in the future, blockchain would be just one of the technology, again, as cloud right now, one of the technology, or I don't know, machine learning would be somewhere in future, or quantum computer would be the same. And before we go deeply into the cases, I do want to give just really basic what is blockchain. Probably everyone know, probably some do not. Yeah, so blockchain is just distributed ledger technology. Yeah, so in simple terms, you probably could think about it as a distributed database, and it have one really important thing inside. It's provide to you immutability. And again, right now, because we're not on early ages anymore, some of that parameters or some of that properties could be disappear from one platform to another. And that's actually another important thing which you should think when you use blockchain. It's not just one blockchain which everyone uses. Yeah? So it's different platforms. It's the same thing when you go to wine shop and try to find right wine. It's red, white, rose, but it's so big difference inside when you open the bottle. Yeah, the same with blockchains. And if you think about that, again, before use one or another platform, you have to think about pluses, minuses, and other things. Because, for example, Corda right now quite popular in finance, whereas blockchain originally, and other platform could be popular in other cases. Yeah, Hyperledger used quite a lot for supply chain management right now. And here, because I promise it, I don't want to talk just about theoretical things. We want to talk a couple of stories, a couple of examples. Yeah? So not all of them would be great. Some of them could be ugly. But we try to show up you how and why we could use technology. And we definitely will give you a couple of good stories as well. Because if stories all would be bad, it's probably you should not use blockchain anymore. Uh, first of all, as I said, blockchain is a technology. And you definitely could do selfie with MacBook. No one could say you could not, yeah, but it's not easy. You have to have that really nice thing for selfie and other things. And blockchain the same, yeah. So and in most cases, then you think about I want to start to use blockchain, probably you should stop and think, can I use just database? Yeah. Because database in 90% cases could solve your problem. You should start think about blockchain if you have something what on that slide and probably on another hour slides. Yeah, so for me, in most cases, blockchain should be used if you have or you want to have some distributed acknowledgement mechanism. Yeah, and you have counterparties which believe it each other, but not fully. Yeah. I could give you an example. For example, you if we talked about Lufthansa and they use blockchain for one of their POCs. They actually think about parts of aircraft. They could use central database for history of the parts of aircraft. But again, in some bad cases, probably information here could be changed. No one say it could be, it will or done already, yeah, but it could. And they could use blockchain and provide notes for external people to guarantee that will not happen, yeah. Or you have some contracts and you have some information which you want to share it between contracts. And you have all that context on paper, but again, go through all workflow process, and I will give you an example from insurance industry later. It would be not easy. Second thing that's actually, then you want to have unchangeable audit trail. It's quite simple, yes, yeah, so it's main thing which blockchain could provide you. You could use some context for automation. You could use f workflows for automation as well, yes. Yeah? So it's also based, if your automation want to be based on some unchangeable rules, it's probably a good idea. And again, last, but it's still here, it's if you want to create a new cryptocurrency, yeah, money, or alternative assets, it's quite popular in finance right now. For example, in Switzerland, you could have your shareholder list in blockchain, yes. Yeah? So it's fully legal and you could use it for your shareholder voting and other stuff. And you could use cryptocurrency so your money thins around that. And here we probably go to another case. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for the introduction. Oh, you're right. That's usually happened with me. <laughs> so everything is fine until it is not. I hate when it is put that way. And I've been questioning myself a lot. Can we do something very simple, something as simple as 
brush your teeth every single morning, can we make a very simple step to help your friends, to help your relatives, to people who realize that they need help, to other people who don't really know that they need help. And uh, this, this, is my, uh, this is my mother's uh, lost record from her medical card. She passed away six years ago. She'd been fighting with cancer for a, a long time. Died in 2013. This is my father's uh, daily routine, taking medical measurements. Um, he passed away last November after a massive stroke. And these examples, those examples, they're not exceptions. They have, it is frustrating how common to see people die because they either don't know that there is a treatment or they don't realize that they have a problem. They have to be fixed. They have to be immediately, they have to be immediately resolved at hospitals or at other institutions. So this is just an example that paper documents, it is a part of the problem that clinical data, healthcare data that we have at the moment, they are isolated. And even if they were not isolated, we have another problem. So let's think that we solve that. We, there is a giant network, but we cannot publish all HR records in, into this global blockchain. We'll have to fix, we'll have to de-anonymize data. We'll have to go through some extreme linking and referencing. But this is not, this is not the end. So let's assume that two items have been fixed. There is also no global protocol that allows us as human beings, as current patients or future patients, to effectively collaborate with each other. And I think this is a part of the bigger problem. It's essential for us as human beings, and I believe in this, to help others. It is a part of our life. It's not like I wake up early morning asking, do, do, you, need, do you need help? But if there is a way how I can contribute seamlessly contribute and help others. I think this is something good. The current system, though, is fragile. Um, for, exa for example, let's, take, let's talk about clinical trials. There, are, there is a very long process to bring a new drug into the market. There is a recruitment process that you'll have to go through, you'll have to verify, there is a compliance and some, some other crazy things that you'll have to go through. But on a patient level, what matters most is you must be aware that there is a clinical trial that you can contribute to your EHR or you can find a treatment. Other problem, the system is fragile that I went, I went to HHS website and you can, you can, you, in the United States, you legally have to publish all the data breaches that happens in your medical and hospital institution. So for the, for, for the very first two months this year, almost a million individuals have been affected by data breaches, whether it was just a human mistake or a hacker or some, something else. And I think this is terribly wrong. Dennis already mentioned that with blockchain, this is a problem first approach, first of all. When, it, when we say blockchain, when, we're not just saying that this is a convenient technology, although it is. We're saying that we have to think through the problems. We have to identify a use case first, first of all. And this is a game changer for me. Now, we're not talking just, let's take Java, let's take .NET technology, let's take something else and create a solution. We take a step back first of all. We take a step back we see that there is a problem, that there are some stakeholders that 
completely agree and aligned that there is a bigger picture that needs to be fixed. And after this, if it is going to be blockchain, excellent, we, we can do this. If it is not blockchain, again, this is a problem first approach. Let's identify what is, the, what is the issue and cohesively, small steps, fix it. So in clinical trials, and there is a really good use case that, let's say that there is a hospital and there is a patient. Hospital holds um, clinical trials with a certain inclusion and exclusion criteria. And there is a patient who is looking, who has a medical condition and who would love to contribute or maybe receive treatment. But at the same time, the question is, well, <laughs> a patient may not know about this clinical trial. There, there are no easy ways. I remember just a couple of months ago, I saw in the New York subway, it was an advertisement. Are you cocaine addicted? We are running a clinical trial, call us. This is a highly inefficient process to do recruitment. Another problem? Well, Alice, uh, a patient, may not trust this hospital. This is a very sensitive data. This is my data. This is my medical data. I might not want to disclose it to just some random guys. Uh, typically, the way how it is solved, it is, it is a third party. It is a middleman. You take an escrow. Those escrow is highly compliant. It has a uh, very strict uh, finance and security regulations built on top of this. Uh, a patient contributes his or her personal data, sorry, HR data, uh, to that bank, to that database, and then medical provider pulls the data and does some manipulations. It works great. Uh, we use banks all, all, all every single day, but there are some known limitations. When we talk about intermediaries, when we talk about middlemen, so there are two foundational problems. One, they slow things down a lot. I took my wife three, three weeks ago to an emergency room. Not, not, nothing serious, but still, we went to an emergency room. I'm still waiting for a, for a, I'm still waiting for my insurance company to send me a letter, electronic letter, telling me what part of that visit is going to be covered. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, the, third, the second problem is middlemen undermine privacy. My favorite example is Equifax hack that happened two years ago. Almost half of the United States population have been affected by this, including social security numbers, of course. So what if there was a algorithm, a solution, a way how these two parties can collaborate interactively and answer certain questions, having data in transfer protected, secured. So this is the Renault algorithm. And what it does, it creates a formal proof. It creates well, first of all, a hospital sends a request to a patient asking for a very limited set of data. Like, I'm looking for your like, heart, heartbeat rate for the, last, for the last month. And when, and then, what a patient does, it creates a proof. And what is a proof? And proof, this is a mathematical construction that, let me put it this way, it shreds all the data, HR data. And this is a one-way transformation, but this is a mathematically proven transformation. So when it comes back to the hospital, hospital can verify that this patient matches inclusion and ex exclusion criteria based on that HR data that patient provided. But at the same time, and this is the key, HR data is, going to be, is never going to be exposed. So if you think about a data transfer, there are three pieces. There is a source, 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 there is a destination, and there is data in between. With zero-knowledge algorithms, you can fix two items out of three. A hospital will never have the 
each our data in plain text, in encrypted form, you will never send, you will never transfer each our data using HTTPS protocol or what, whatever. It is. Again, this is a one-way transformation. So ultimately, it is going to be patient who owns data, who keeps the data, and has full, full control around it. So just as a quick summary, I know I've been doing lots of crazy hand-waving things. Uh, if you remember just one thing uh, from that presentation is zero-knowledge algorithms, this is a proven technology, zero-knowledge algorithms work amazingly well with blockchain. And zero-knowledge algorithms allows you to create a statement, yes, no statement, to solve a variety, a, a very big class of problems. Thank you. Yeah, and also if you return to more classical, let's say, if you could say classical about blockchains, the most cases what we done for our clients, it should not be surprises from finance space, yeah, because blockchain originally was from here. Yes, I want to give you also a couple of examples. First of all, for example, blockchain really good in shareholder voting or any other voting processes, because you could guarantee how votes go in which spot and it would be fully transparent for everyone. Yeah, actually we done that project for some of our clients and it use with quite success. Another big part of the industry where blockchain right now most likely will be used in the next couple of years and already used it's for actually different insurance collaboration. Yeah, For one of our clients, big insurance company, we help them with reinsurance and insurance collaboration platform. The main idea it's actually it had a big contract inside of that and in first picture you could see how processes looks like right now. It's so many participants, so many different uh, involvements and actually information sharing between of them. The teeny things in the middle, it's actually emails with excels, yeah, so you could guess how inefficient that process could be if you send email with excel with most of your information each month which highly delivered and not so easy to read sometimes. Uh, what blockchain could help here. It's used it as a source of truth, central source of truth. Then everyone actually apply that information about monthly movements, about claims, about other things. And based on the, again, pre-agreed formulas, it's provide calculations for claims or for other payments, mostly immediately. And you have full audit trail. You could easily use blockchain right now also because it's on clouds. Yeah, so it's you should not go to and try to create network by yourself. Yeah, so it's the same as a machine learning. Right now you could go and spin off your blockchain network mostly in minutes in any major clouds. Amazon provide that, Azure provide that, and other major cloud providers give you possibility to do that. So experiments and tries, it's easy to do right now. And here it's again, it's I could sound so obvious, but start from the business problem. Try to find the business case, and after that, try to find the technology. And as soon as you think blockchain could be good for you, do not try to create the program from the scratch or immediately do the big one. Because blockchain is still research and development. It's the same actually as other technology, new technology, and you should try and show up it will work in your environment. Because blockchain, it's not just about technology, it's also about communities, how you will manage community. If you have no community or you have no so many participants, it's actually useless because you have, should not have distributed environment. And you could reuse your old ecosystem. Do not try to eat elephant immediately, eat it by pieces. Yeah? So, you, you should try to use your ecosystem as much as you can. And again, if you're already in cloud, you could easily to reuse it because you could use the same cloud and blockchain. And some advertising call us. We've done so many projects. We know about that. And probably not just us, but other consultancy also. It's not so easy to start by yourself. Your, all IT guys would be excited about blockchain, most of them as a, other technologies, but probably to not start from the scratch sometimes. 
And before we close, it's also really good comics about that. Yes, yeah, so you could use blockchain, you could use machine learning, you could use any other technology, but you should not stuck on one of that. Yes, yeah, so all of them provide you different possibilities and different pluses and minuses. Experiment, try to find something new. And it definitely will increase your business efficiency or revenue or other things. And yeah, that's actually it. Thank you so much to be here, to be with us. And I don't know, do you have any questions? It was a slide for these questions. It's uh, a lot of news about blockchain in the food industry and traceability. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on the use cases there? Have you, have you seen any good use cases for blockchain? Yeah, we saw in some, not in real food industry yet, yeah, but for example, for wines, yeah, for wines producers. We had a couple of companies which we work with, yeah, so they provide information about, if you bought some wine and you move it from one place to another, you have to guarantee temperature and other things during the way, yes, so and you could combine actually blockchain and IT devices and save all information about from the way, yes, so you guarantee your end up customers how it will work. Yeah, also, again, not in food industry, but it's some supply chain, yeah, so you could do some tracking for the drugs and other stuff, yes, so and it could be the same cases around that. Uh, it's not again market leaders, it's probably community leaders, yeah, so as I said, for example, Colda done amazing work in IT, in finance and insurance industries, yeah, so actually they go up and they grow up community and work with that, and other players as IBM who create Fabric, Hyperledger also work with communities, yeah, so it's more about community and around blockchains. Companies that you guys work with that start to use blockchain technologies, what what does staffing look like? What's the skill sets that they need to bring from a team perspective to, if not implement, at least support um, the blockchain technology after it goes into production? Yeah, so first of all, support on production right now, it's easy because, for example, Amazon provide managed services for blockchain. Yeah, so they just started it, yeah, so to support it from its mostly of the same skills which you have to use to use Amazon. Uh, from the development perspective, again, it's different blockchains and it's different languages around that. So some of your IT guys have to know about Kotlin or other things, but it's usually like a more advanced languages than Java and everyone happy to learn a little bit about that. Kirill? For example, Ethereum, uh, it, it run, Ethereum, this is one of the blockchain implementation. It runs its own uh, language called Solidity. And uh, some people say that Solidity reminds JavaScript, but uh, practically speaking, when you bring a, Java, a JavaScript developer to create Solidity applications, it, there is a learning curve. Uh, so uh, there, are some, there, are some, there is definitely some onboarding that you'll have to pass through. It, it, is, uh, it, it is not rocket science. It is not terribly difficult languages. They have a very high level of abstraction. So uh, as long as you are confident with uh, modern technologies, uh, Java, Kotlin, uh, JavaScript, .NET, it is going to be, it is certainly going to be a, a certain mind shift. Because with blockchain, you're essentially talking about distributed applications. And, uh, but other than that, I, it shouldn't be a really big deal. Uh, again, as I said, you have to have some good business case. Most of our clients usually build business case around that. 
And if you have a business case with positive cash flow, yeah, not just idea which you want to implement, but some impact to the business which you could calculate, it's easy to predict. Yeah, so you, you're definitely right to create some tangible project that probably could be around a million, but if you, it will give you a couple of millions in future and you have it as a business case, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, so, and also you're absolutely right, most of the major players like SAP or Salesforce or other guys experiment with blockchain as well. Yeah, so they try to include it into their platforms and it also provides any other possibilities to see how it could be. I'll give you another, another example. So uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, uh, the blockchain started with cryptocurrencies as a digital, digital money solution. And the promise was when you send you, when I send you a single, when I send you a dollar, uh, it is important that I still own this dollar. Uh, the tricky part is we already have banks. We use, we use them every single day, credit card payments, etc., etc., etc. And in the reality, there is a massive resistance if you try to replace something that works, uh, things the, the way they, they are for a reason. So if there are no good business driver uh, just bringing a blockchain technology to substitute something existent, typically, typically it is going to fail. Uh, to start something from scratch, it is going to be a completely different um, dynamics. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And if you have any other questions, we will be around. Thank you. Thank you.